pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So what's my panic button for? Um, that's a great question. For when Amy, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the, that's the injection. There's now a oh good trap door. It's gonna look like we're on. Just shoot me up, goose. Hold on. Hold on. <sighs> we're getting all excited about buttons up here. We got buttons. Right. Morning, Tammy. Right. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners approves the April 20th, 2023 regular meeting minutes. More than happy to second that. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right. Move to approve the April 20th, 2023. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, do we want to move into the department update or do we want to do the business stuff first and circle back? Do, do the business first. Okay, so the first one would be a journal entry. Uh, Commissioner Battlementi, I would need you to sign the Ohio Mark System Key Agreement as the president of the Board of County Commissioners. Did you want to, okay, did you want to do the departmental update first and then do journal That's what he just said. Yeah. So just go ahead. I was going to do the business first and then circle oh, okay. back because we do have an exec session. I'm sorry, I, I, okay. I didn't Okay, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners authorizes Commissioner Anthony J. Battlementi, president of the board, to sign in the Ohio Multi Agency Radio Communication Systems Marks. Mobile Voice Delivery System, MVDS, Advanced System Key Agreement. Copies of this agreement will be kept on file at the Homeland Security and Emergency Management Office. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Update, sir. Okay, so perfect. <coughs> All right, just general update. Um, on the Emergency Management Office, our, our core capital projects that you're aware of, the first one is the broadband project. Uh, Shannon brought that contract together or about three weeks ago now. Yep. So the, the biggest hiccup is getting the poll agreements, it's the actual physical poll. Sometimes they're owned by First Energy, sometimes they're privately owned, so they have oh. to get a separate agreement for every single poll that they're going to put fiber on to eventually get to the house. So that's where they are. Um, also part of that agreement is they have to come mm. in and provide quarterly updates, I believe. So hopefully um, Spectrum they, will eventually come in okay. and provide formal updates on where they are in the project. But the project has started. Awesome. They're actually working on the poll agreements before we even signed a contractual agreement. But that's where they were in the last realm. Um, we get a lot of questions on specific addresses. Am I in the service area? And there's some stuff called synergy. So if they see a street and they think it's advantageous for them to go down, but it wasn't part of the project, they consider that synergy, and they'll go ahead and build out down that street. Really? So there's a lot of synergy areas even outside the RDOF project and the Portage County project, which is positive. But a lot of times we get questions, especially in Freedom Township and a few others, like, is this address included? I actually have yeah. a list of every single address that is meant to be serviced in this project. So it's nice I can go in there and, and reference it. It's long something. time coming for a lot of them. Absolutely. So they, so they are excited. Yeah, we're talking upwards of 1,000 megabytes per second download, 500 megabytes per second upload, which is That's high, high speed. So it's positive. The other side of the Marks Towers, um, ran into, not, not what you consider a hiccup, just a delay on the ODOT site in Deerfield, which has actually been probably the easiest site out of all three to date. We had to do a wetland study. Um. We wanted to shift the tower. They have a salt dome out there and wanted to see if we can move the tower just a little bit more uh, east so they can get a little more space between them and the salt dome. So we were able to do that wetland study. We got those results last week, all positive. Uh, we're able to shift, give them from originally 18 feet to I think it was 32 feet space between that and the salt dome. So ODOT gave some concurrence yesterday in email. They want to look at some other uh, easements for the electric and everything else that's running to the, the tower, but all positive there. And then working with Shannon, we should be sending out the actual construction of the tower bid within the next two weeks, I would think. So hopefully... And there are three towers? Three towers, yes. And hopefully they're going to be built concurrently. James A. Garfield, Deerfield, and then Suffield. When do you yeah. expect those to all be done? Well, breaking ground, I think we've we've informally talked about fall on all three sites, and then hopefully once I get the construction, I can give you a little accurate time frame. Okay. And we have Sooner a than later would be ideal. Uh, already. Correct. So the other, we moved the shelter procurement up front yeah. because they were so delayed, six to eight months. So we're looking at 180 days plus before we receive those shelters. So mm -hmm. we didn't want to wait to the back end and then wait for that to happen. Mm -hmm. So those have been moved up. We're going with Shannon again. Got that procurement. We actually sent a PO to them yesterday, so they're going to start that process. So. So everything on the Marks front is moving forward. A little bit of delay, but it's it's getting there. Can't wait to cut a ribbon one day. And then the EMA EOC, also working with Shannon, we've, we're pretty much in the 11th hour getting ready to send that out to a bid for the construction company as well. Met with, uh, we went to the National Weather Service in Cleveland to look at some AV system they have, or just a meeting there, and I saw the AV system they have. So we're meeting with that vendor for all the status boards and situation boards. So, But anyways, that's close to going to bid as well. So, And that's September 2024, based on where we are, until we're moving in. <laughs> Roger. 
of that sort. Is that so. before the eclipse or after? Ah, oh, that's after. It's after. Ah, oh, dang it. So, <laughs> dang you know, it. And the state of Ohio is actually looking to, to do a lot for the eclipse, moving money in to watch that on yeah. agencies yeah. respond to that. So they're expecting quite the disruption. On the planning side, debris management would be the focus, donations management. When I say debris management, think about Joplin, Missouri, tornado group. They created more debris than 9-11. Right. What do you do with all that? You can't just load it in trucks and take it to a landfill. So it's one of the, I asked the state of Ohio one time, what's the thing that stresses you out the most? And that's debris management post large natural disaster. So that's the thing that really stresses communities. So that's the planning effort we're doing this year. Uh, donations management, working with the Portage Foundation and United Way. And then we're updating our UOP and we'll ask you guys to promulgate it at the end of the year, just general updates. It's been a little while since we gave it some TLC. On the training front, we actually were awarded a $106,000 grant for regional collapse search and rescue training in six classes. So that's going to be hosted here locally. So that was an award we got in FY21. And then we'll probably come in to talk a little bit about sustainment of some of our specialty teams as well as just some stuff that's at EMA, like PPE and things of that nature. We've been delivering our active shooter program. 300 local first responders have been trained directly by, by Portage County EMA staff. So and that's about unified response, uniform response to, to active shooter events. Uh, we're doing the building evacuation lockdown training with the auditor in May, which is fantastic. That was the one office we missed the last go around, so to do that with the new auditor and her staff, or his staff, is going to be fantastic. And we actually have disaster recovery training, and we have we developed a program on disaster recovery, and that's kicking off at Streetsboro on May 11th. So that's going to be awesome. And then on the mitigation front, the Manaway Township project has come to a close. They got the results from that study. That was about a hundred and ten thousand dollar project. And then also, what city, was that study for? Uh, Manaway Center Road flooding. Mm -hmm. So it was a uh, hydrology study to see what we can do to mitigate flooding along Manaway Center Road. Um, we needed a little bit more information from that, so the state of Ohio, as well as myself, gave some criticism back, and hopefully uh, Osborne Engineering will, will make the adjustments accordingly. And then City of Aurora was awarded $2.3 million for some flood mitigation along Aurora Lake. Mm -hmm. So That's that was great. great. That's removal great. of structures, as well as, uh, I think, some stormwater projects. And then some hurdles on the mitigation front. It's always, the number one, we call it project scoping, is people don't have the engineering studies to actually go do the project. They want shelf-ready projects. So what can we do to get some of these projects that are identified in our plan, get the actual engineering and hydrology study done so we can actually go for some projects when these funding sources open up. The other thing is, is funding, of course, it's 75-25. So if it's a $100,000 project, 25,000 has to come from somewhere. Uh, the state of Ohio is looking at developing a mitigation project, and I may bring a concept to you to also commit to some mitigation down in the future. So I'll try to formalize that thought and bring to you where the county can help offset some of those costs from localities to, to do some mitigation. And then of course, fear of liability. Anytime someone takes a risk and wants to go address a concern, that they feel that as if they're liable to the flooding issues, which has happened before. So trying to get over those hurdles as well. And that is it from the department update. Nice. So busy, busy. Any questions? Good yeah. job. Yeah. Thank you. We now make a motion to go into executive session in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 121.22G6, motion to enter into executive session to discuss details relative to the security arrangements and emergency response protocols for a public office if disclosure of the matter discussed could reasonably be expected to jeopardize the security of the public office. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Kelly? Yes.
I listened to Ryan for two minutes. Right? I, I I've had too much coffee. I had, oh, you've had I had too the much. energy drink from okay. Rebecca Nutrition. Okay. We're, we're in a, you ready? Yep. We're going to come okay. out of executive session? I'll make a motion to come out of executive, executive session. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. No action. No action? No action, Jackson. Thank All right, thank you, sir. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. You're up, ma'am. Tammy, good morning. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. Sure. How are you this morning? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for being so patient. We're way behind. <laughs> we'll pick up. We'll okay. get All right, let's get it. Okay, so the only thing uh, I'll say is in the one um, requesting to post the family team meeting coordinator, so that is that additional position that JFS, when they were talking about staging a couple different positions, this was one of, this was another one of those. So, but, uh, Sue Brandon went ahead and did a, um, a budget analysis so that they, she could show that they're, they're good for that um, position for us to post. Everything yet? Everything All right. Good. All right, I'll start. In accordance with Section 305.30 of the Ohio Revised Code in this board's resolution 21-0396, Part 9I, the Board of Commissioners acknowledge and approve the county administrator's approval too. I'll make a motion to authorize the hire of Matthew Dunnerstick, Child and Adult Protective Supervisor, Portage County Jobs and Family Services. The tentative start date is Monday, May 1st, 2023. The Board of Commissioners agrees that this hire is contingent upon the applicant passing the required pre-employment training. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize the hire of Madeline George, PCSA Administrative Assistant, Portage County Jobs and Family Services. The tentative start date is Monday, May 1st, 2023. The Board of Commissioners agrees that this hire is contingent upon the applicant passing the required pre-employment screening. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize the hire of Deidre McChesney, Case Manager, OMJ, Portage County Jobs and Family Services. The tentative start date is Monday, May 1st, 2023. The Board of Commissioners agrees that this hire is contingent upon the applicant passing the required pre-employment screenings. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation of Rosemary Stagg, Social Service for, or Social Service for Children's Service Division for the Portage County Jobs <coughs> and Family Services, effective April 19th, 2023. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Yes. Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize the three-day internal posting of the bargaining positioning for the Social Service Board Worker Children Service Division for the Portage County Jobs and Family Services with an external posting if no internal appointment is made. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize a three-day internal posting of bargaining position for the Family Team Meeting Coordinator, Children's Service Division for the Portage County Jobs and Family Services with an external posting if no internal appointment is made. Second. Roll call. Yes, Mike? Yes. Tony. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you this morning? Good. I don't have anything out of the ordinary today, so just uh, one resolution and then the usual journal. We're going to have a that many today, so that's good. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll make a mo motion in accordance with Section 305.30K of the Ohio uh, Revised Code in this board's resolution 21-0396 and this board's resolution 21-0878. The Board of Commissioners acknowledges and approves the county administration approval too. I'll make a motion to direct the auditor's office to pay process the April 20th, 2023 bills, ACH payments, wires, journal vouchers, and then announce as applicable contingent upon the verification of the reports as presented by the county auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to process the April 20th, 2023 budget amendments as reviewed and recommended by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to transfer the funds to fund 8300 Solid Waste Journal Administration to fund 8355 SWOWDA loan 2017. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sir Dog Warden, good morning. I'm out of the ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm gonna make, make it quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> speed up on Ryan's time. Yeah. You're okay. We're good. Thanks for being patient. No, I, I, it's just a, a update. I, I know that we yeah. talked in the past. Um, Michelle would like all the directors to do these updates, and I yes. think it's a great idea. Yeah. I think it's a great idea too. So, um, 
that's all I really have. A couple things, but just uh, real quick, uh, we have brought in just from the very beginning of the year till now, we brought in over 105 dogs for the kennel. Um, that's oh, quite a few, especially. That's a lot. For this time of the year, it is. Typically, the summers is when we get a lot of the dogs, and for whatever reason right now, I, you know, we got a bunch. Uh, out of those 105 that were brought in, we have returned uh, to their owners, we've adopted, we've sent to rescue, all that, 93. So, I mean, unfortunately, that's still a bad number for us because there's that difference of 12 dogs that are still in the kennel that we are not able to get home right now. So, we are loaded. Um, and on top of that, one of our ways that we try to manage that and get our numbers down is we do a canvassing program in the summer. And right now we've had our canvassing position open for about a month and a half, I believe. And we have gotten three people to come in and interview, but somehow I ask them to go to HR, they all excited, and then they ghost HR. So I don't know what it is, they just don't want to work, they don't want to be here. They is there an age for that? 18. 18. Yeah, and we really haven't pushed hard on the high schools because we it, it really is a perfect job for a college-age kid. Mm -hmm. uh, you get out at the beginning of May, you work till college goes back in session. Uh, we're pretty flexible. I'm real flexible with it. If they go on vacation in the summer, you know, hey, you're a college kid. You know, go on vacation. But we do try to have three, and right now I don't even have one. Um, you know, we've increased it from uh, three, three years ago, three, four years ago, from $10 an hour. We're now paying fifteen dollars an hour to try to compete, and we're just not getting. How many so hours? Is Thirty-five. Thirty-five a week. We do uh, nine nine a.m. We we even let them sleep in a little an extra hour <laughs> as a college kid, uh, and then they work till four. So and then we we actually let them get a little bit of a break right in the middle of the day, whether you call it lunch or a break, whatever, you know, just to get them off their feet because they are walking. Yeah. So and they go house to house. They go house to house unless you have a dog license and they jump over it. So, so why wouldn't we do that a little bit later when people get home from work? After hours? Well, after four after four thirty. I mean, yeah. I don't get home till six thirty or seven all the time. Because um, I don't have any deputies there. Okay. Um, I mean, we we don't have a big staff. We're smaller staff. And I'm talking just, the people that go door to door. Yeah, I guess I'd be a little more worried about um, safety. You know, I want to have. We're not doing that in dark, right? I mean, we're not talking no. In dark, but they're no. I mean, having somebody around them. Mm -hmm. I don't want just a, you know a couple college kids or whatever. So there's a deputy with the kids. Is there the around that area? With, with typically, it, that area. yeah. Typically, they're around and they're 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 following up on their own okay. stuff. All right. Thank you. Anything else? So so have we got with Kelly Joe and them to see? If they can do something on OMJ, or we have a CCMP program that gets certain age, um, kids that, and that is from 14 to 24, that yeah. age frame. But I, no. I was just wondering, and they actually it's a good have idea. The funds, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a good idea. I'm not even worried about the funds. I'll pay them. It, it's just yeah. getting them. But I did bring it up in our leadership meeting, and uh, yeah. you know, I can bring it up to Kelly Joe uh, specifically, maybe about. Seeing if they have somebody, so Maybe I, I Tammy don't. Saltis. And I don't know, you know, the two people that we did, and we were sending to HR. You know, one of the last questions was, you know, we're going to do a drug test. I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not, but for whatever reason, they're just not going to HR, even though they tell me, yes, I want the job. So, okay. yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you the go. update. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Thanks, Dave. Morning, Miss Shannon. Good morning. I just have project updates, but I only have one little page, one little thing. What? I know. So right. That's, That's good. good. That shows how hard it was. What were you doing? Sleeping all week? Trying, trying to catch some Z's. Eating M&M's, drinking their diet. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> And the and my only update is that the tuck point is finished. It looks nice, and it looks awesome. They yeah. did a really good they job, and they actually did more than what they were. I see that. They just saw, they saw spots that. Yep, they so saw it. They kept fixing. Thank and them. They were really good. Very much. And I saw them working on the courthouse steps yesterday. Yes, Kent. Yes, they started. I I same guys. Yeah. Same company. They're a really good. Company. They've done a good job. Yeah, yeah. and I have um, maintenance has been going over there daily just to make sure. 
you know everything's going okay and they have everything that they need there. So cool. yeah, great. Bob's doing okay. a great job. Very yeah, I know. Doesn't that ceiling look work, so good? He's doing good. Yeah, it's a slow process, but it looks good in the yeah. the ceilings and mm -hmm. it does make yeah, a difference. It does. Doing great. <laughs> I appreciate you. Yes, and thank you. Yes. Thank you for our update. We always get excited to see what's getting done. So. Yes. Me too. <laughs> All right. Well, then, do you have any anything you want to just comment on, Shannon, regarding the resolutions? Mm -hmm. Nope, not these ones. I'm okay. Good. All right. I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners authorizes the preparation of plan specs and estimate of cost for project number MB-023-130, Manaway WWTP clarifier covers for the Portage County Water Resource Department. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. The Board of Commissioners uh, accepts and awards the bid for the Portage County Justice Center Dispatch Renovation. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners accepts and awards the bid for the shelter for the Marks Radio Towers for the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Thank okay. you, Shannon. Thank Shannon, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Dan, you're up, sir. Morning. Morning, Dan. <laughs> so, we are just giving every, I guess we'll give an update on mm -hmm. uh, 911 side of things. Okay. So, um, Sabrina, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, last February we approved the additional positions for Aurora, new um, <coughs> circuits for everybody. It was lower prices and lower prices <coughs> on position counts with AT&T. In normal AT&T fashion, we are still trying to get there. So. <laughs> <clears throat> um, what is coming across my desk right now um, that will come to you guys here shortly, um, we're looking for a resolution to get Aurora's um, circuits signed off. And all that is is just basically a five-year lock-in price um, that we could change our speed or our um, circuit speed in that five years, and they're not going to make us sign a new contract. I don't foresee that we're going to change speeds. Um, I worked with AT&T's. <clears throat> excuse me, network engineers to make sure the speed that we chose for the price was what we needed. Even if we moved to some next generation 911 stuff that we yeah. would be, we'd be good. We didn't have to mess around with that anymore for the next five years. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's where, kind of where we're at. Dan, I think it would do good to give Commissioner Battle and Tim Tim some background as far as um, why Aurora is being added in late versus they were always a piece app that was paying their 911 uh, fees into it, but they opted not to participate in the contract at the time because when they all decided to come under this 911 committee, um, Aurora had like 220 some thousand set aside to buy new equipment mm -hmm. for their dispatch, mm -hmm. and they were told that if they joined in with the 911 committee, they had to surrender that money to the committee mm -hmm. for the full pot, mm -hmm. and they said no. We'll just stay out, but we'll go ahead and allow our 911 fees, the 25 cents, which is going to go up to 64, I think. Mm -hmm. like um, 64 to continue to go in it, but at this time, we'll stay on our own contract because we're going to do it. Well, now their contract's getting ready to expire, and they mm -hmm. want to now come in, which means we have to add them to our AT&T plan. <coughs> Correct. So when <coughs> AT&T purchased, they essentially bought their equipment, their backroom networking, and they were paying for their internet connection or circuit, essentially. Um, <coughs> and that's kind of pricey. Um, I mean, even our contract at the county level for yeah. the primary PSAPs, you're paying $900 per month per seat. You know, so the sheriff has four. Um, Ravenna has three, Kent State has four, Kent City has four, Streetsboro has two. Um, so Aurora was out on their own. Mm -hmm. They were still interfaced into us, you know, so, but they were paying for their own. So um, kind of some of the benefits for them to join us, obviously it's not coming out of the Aurora budget anymore, um, but we, um, all of our positions are leased. So if there's a problem with it, at t takes care of it. The maintenance yeah. is included, all of that. So. That was kind of brought up at our technical advisory committee meeting. Um, they had an interest, they submitted a letter to me, and the uh, tech voted to go for it, and then the board voted. So yeah. so that's kind of where we're at. We're trying to get all the background things going on so we can get them up But and mind line, you, this so. was over a year ago. Yes. And I talked oh, yes. to Chief Byard, and he was <coughs> saying, yeah, they've been working on this since January, and there's something, is there parts or something that they're saying that's delaying uh, parts it? Parts were a big, the computers were a big yeah. thing. Um, 
I mean, we, I'd been poking people. Um, Captain Anna Mosier from Kent had, was reaching out to me, hey, where's my stuff, where's my stuff? I said, hey, you are more than welcome to reach out yeah. and poke AT&T as well, because <laughs> I'm at the end of my rope, because um, they kept claiming um, supply issues from COVID. So, yeah. but uh, to this day, I believe um, Ravenna is up and running, Kent, Kent City is up and running, Kent State might have had uh, a failed computer that actually came in, so I think they're still working on that. But uh, the big thing holding Aurora up right now is just getting that contract finalized for their internet connection or circuit. Yeah. And they're <clears throat> the problem with Aurora is they're out of the AT&T coverage area, so AT&T had to reach out for a third party and do all this other extra stuff yeah. that the other PSEPs didn't have to go through. So. Okay. Does it ever look like a chance that Aurora is going to come to our dispatch? What do you mean, like uh, as we as our dispatch centers? completed that i i don't have an just, answer just, to that yeah. I, I wouldn't i wouldn't think so i no. mean i, I yeah so, i mean I've i'm presenting to you guys on the 911 coordinator mm -hmm. side of things okay. we'll just cover that up for a second right. so <laughs> but as far as that goes i have no idea okay. we we've not been approached yeah. all, right. So. Yep. Just, all right so anything else anything? nope 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 thank you very right, much for coming i appreciate thank it you. thank you thank you that's wonderful hope good morning hope hello hello What's up? Um, is it okay if we do all of the Homeland Security grants, the resolutions, before I get into my discussion? Sure. Um, okay. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 47000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's state, state Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes, Mike. Yes. Hi. Yes. I think it's Mike's turn to read. Um, you got a ways, make a you got a ways to go. <laughs> you make a you motion. Such an outstanding <laughs> job. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of twenty-eight thousand to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Serena. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 37400 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 30000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call, please. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 47100 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage <coughs> County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call, please. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 112000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Yes. Can I ask a question why we didn't just apply for one month sum? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just curious, did they come at different times, Second. or why are we, <laughs> why, why no. are my so reading 25 different? Because we're entertained, and they have to be all separately. Different <laughs> projects for several okay. different departments, so you can't apply for a lump sum, you have to, okay. Say what they're for. Yeah. I just wanted to Sorry. ask, because I'm sure I know people in the public lot. are wondering, well, I'm reading the same, but it's just different <clears> amounts, <throat> okay. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 95000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 81000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 60000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's State Homeland Security Grant Program for the Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize grant application in the amount of 65000 to the Ohio Emergency Management Agency's State Homeland Security Grant Program for the 
Portage County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize the application to Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services 2023 Recovery Ohio Law Enforcement Fund solicitation on behalf of the Portage County Sheriff's Office. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Mike. Yes. Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion to authorize the application to apply and accept the grant award for the office, Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services 2023 Edward Byron um, Memorial Justice Assistance Grant JAG solicitation on behalf of the Portage County Sheriff's Office. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion to accept and grant award from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Watercraft Marine Patrol Assistance Grant Program for the Portage County Sheriff. Second with discussion. Oh, okay. When does that get awarded, do you know? Uh, the Marine Patrol Assistance Fund? Yes. Um, because uh, summer's here, and I'd like to make sure they're rocking and rolling and keeping the drunken boaters off our waterways. Um, so the grant award is for January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, 2023. So as soon okay. as the award is accepted, then it goes. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners approve the allocations for the American Rescue Plan Act and for the state and local fiscal recovery funds to be utilized by the Portage County Food Program. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Yes. Tony. Nice job. Thank you. Yes. Discussion. Okay. Um, I forget which was first on the list. Sorry. Update on pending grants. Oh, right. So um, there have been a few issues with um, departments applying for grants and then uh, bringing <coughs> the resolution forward after the fact. Um, specifically, uh, I brought one today. It was. Um, uh, the JAG grant, mm -hmm. it's authorized the application to and then accept the grant award. So this isn't exactly following procedure. How would the board like me to move forward in the future if this continues to happen? When was the last time we briefed everybody on procedure? Yeah. Mm, I mean, throughout emails, I'd say just periodically, maybe the last time was January or December, but we had a meeting with this uh, department in October mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it, it's been said multiple times okay. that they need to have a resolution before they apply to grants mm -hmm. and before they uh, accept the award so should I continue to let them do this or should uh, I how many how many only one department goes off course mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd say you know if from this day forward if if we yeah. don't do the procedures, then there will either be a delay or it won't, won't be accepted. The, and again, reiterate, these are the procedures yeah. every department in the county has to go by. Okay. Yeah. Um, may I go say ahead, something? Please. <laughs> We've done that already? Okay. We, well, we have, yep. but you know, occasionally they would have um, a late finding a grant late. And so mm -hmm. occasionally apply and accept would happen but it's just too frequent. That's what you're saying, right? Like we, right. we don't want to take it off the table because in emergent situations, yeah. if they just happen to find a grant. Um, well, I, I have no I problem with it occasionally happen, occasionally and doing it on yeah. a regular basis are two very different things. And we can maybe point out to the department, you've done this eight times in the last year. And going forward, we need to we need to curtail this and we understand the rules. But if I do eight of them or whatever the number yeah. is, just then I'm not following procedures, right? Right. Okay. And then the other part of the grants question I have right now is um, there's been a department that has been applying for grants for personnel costs, and I understand that there may be some pending questions about budgets. Mm -hmm. Should I hold on? Uh, reviewing and taking grants concerning personnel costs to the board for the moment until their budget concerns are addressed. I, I think we need to make sure before if you have to wait yeah. every Thursday that director of finance and the county administrator be informed hey we're doing this and this this is happening and then bring it to the board. Are we going to, yeah. yeah, are we going to be able, because why waste a lot of time it, writing a grant and going through the process 
if it's not going to be able to be sustained or we can't abide by the terms. So, so we that and then the administrator of finance has the ability to call each one of us and get an idea of where to go. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. that you wanted to add about that? Um, I think we discussed it pretty thoroughly mm -hmm. last week. So. Okay. Michelle, do you have anything to add? With I that? do not. I think you're doing great. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So there's always just like the the last for the last thing you brought up prior to that. There's always an exception for that, and bring us all in rather than waiting a week yeah. or two weeks. I mean, we all get text messages or calls yeah. all day. From, from but everybody. the exception can't be made every single time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want no confusion out there that we said you can't ever do that. Again. No. Okay. Yep. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Right. It's it's. If that's norm, then that's a problem. It's yeah. exception. And I, I don't totally agree with not allowing departments to do their grants. Um, I feel that if they want to write them and they want to submit them, that's up to them. It's up to us to say yes or no. Um, so that's how I feel about it. Does every grant from every department have to come in through our, our yes. office? So anybody mm -hmm. can write their own grant or go out and find their own grant. And in fact, yeah. I will tell you, the Sheriff's Department is really great at that. However, the process of writing the resolution and making sure that all um, T's are crossed, I's, dot, um, I's are dotted, they generally will go through HOPE. And then HOPE, after having vetted the entire grant, will bring them to the board. That's generally how we do it okay. because sometimes we don't want to be on the hook for too much and we can't. Right. Um, sustain it so that's how the process had been but the bottom line ends right here and I don't want to discourage anybody for attempting to get a grant that we could possibly get oh no no, and no. Then once it's once I get a grant then I bring it back to the grant administrator and you write the resolution is that the way it is or um, they write are no, their own resolutions? they send the res resolutions to me and I'll review them okay but I, I mean really what I've been doing is just seeing if the grant is sustainable mm -hmm. and if they can adhere to all of the federal mm -hmm. uniform guidance mm -hmm. that comes with the grant mm -hmm. so procurement um, meeting with Jackie and seeing if they can um, manage it with their budget if okay. there's a match things like that mm -hmm. so um, so you're already doing that yes. yeah okay yes. cool yeah. So there, there's nothing that we're stopping them. It's just yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then for the ARPA update, I just wanted to Ooh, tell, yeah. That's tell you guys right about here. the last resolution. So uh, we received applications for 14 programs, and there were, I believe, 11 or 12 UEIs. So we had one entity that had one UEI, but they had three applications. So we're Can you giving explain them to me what that acronym oh, is? It's, uh, Good. I'm so I like so, that. Huh? <laughs> so a UEI is a unique entity identifier, and it used to be known as DUNS. So this is through SAM.gov. Oh, the DUNS So number. it's basically okay. like a you know how we all have social security mm -hmm. numbers it's kind of like a tax number for a different number. entities yeah. okay. where they can track how much funding they're dealing with um, but we need a UEI for each funding opportunity so I, I need that for when I'm doing my reporting so that's a very important thing for them to have um, how long does it take for them to get that not very long. I was going to say, no. normally I think you can get it within like a day or something. You just yeah. plug in and you can get a done number or now. Mm -hmm. Are you having them do that or you doing that? Uh, that was a requirement for them to apply. They had to do they that They had to get that? Yeah. Okay, and so we, we tell them, hey, you have to get this yeah. number before we can mm -hmm. participate? Yeah, yeah, and I think most of them had it already, mm -hmm. so that was good. Um, so you got 14 <coughs> requests? Yes, so we're giving priority to the... Uh, programs that focus on feeding children, so there were two of them. Uh, we're giving them a award of about 80% of what their total request was, and it, this will be over three years. And then... So what is that amount? Um, oh, just so I, I know. Well, let me pull up my spreadsheet. So the Ben Curtis Foundation, their total award is 175000 Holy. Yeah, one hundred seventy-five thousand nine hundred sixty-two dollars for over three years, or each year. Over three years. Over three years. Okay. Let me see if that's right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Sorry, I just want to double-check my okay. resolution and make sure I'm giving you guys the yep. right information. 
Um, I apologize. I said there the wrong number. That was their total amount that they applied for. We're giving them one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so eighty percent of that. No, that's right in the uh, back yeah. page so it's of all the resolution. Yeah. It's in the resolution. And then uh, Raven packs. So we're giving them. $130,500. And then for all of the other programs, we're giving them just over 60% of their total request. 16. So that's the other 12? Uh, you said they're a total yes. of 14? Yes. Okay. So we, we said the Curtis Foundation, the Raven Pack, and then you have smaller ones for mm -hmm. 10 other smaller ones. Yes. Okay. So the total funding amount will be 900000 uh, nine hundred forty-one thousand one hundred and twenty-two dollars. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and then our consultant is going to send out an email to all of the applicants that are receiving awards on by May first, and then we're going to follow up with all of the award documents, and then we'll move forward from there. Excellent. And so, Hope, just to reiterate, so when I look at, like, um, Access Point Health Centers, 97.5, that 97.5 is spread out over three years, right? Yes. Yeah, so everything's divided by three. Three. That we're given, yeah, right? that we're given. Mm -hmm. Everything's divided by three? Yes. Okay. Okay. Over three years. Um, what was that? that well, no, it's, it's, what was the total it's in my amount notes. Yeah. Of, of, that we gave out was nine hundred nine hundred forty one thousand one hundred and twenty two dollars. Good. We still have enough to pay the consultants. Yes. And Great. Good okay. job. Hope. Thank you. Okay. Very questions? nice. Nice. Any other questions for Hope? Good. Hope. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank yeah. you. And thank you for all your work on this. I'm sure. Now, will they get notified yet? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looking for my public hearing notes. I got right here. Mm -hmm. We can't start the well until ten. We got three minutes. Yeah. Actually, two minutes. Two one of these. How are you this morning? We got two minutes to wait. Sorry. We actually made up time. That's yeah. a quick read. Mm -hmm. It was the quick read. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I can't read that in two minutes. So. <laughs> you guys want to come on up? I left my can downstairs. Did you? I did. Cool. <laughs> well, I was, I was so put it in recycling. I was abruptly shut the door and I'm flustered and I left it here. I apologize. <laughs> so I had to clean up after. It's like, really? I didn't mean to fluster you. Well, it's okay. <laughs> I'm told I do that sometimes. Well, you just said you're done. Go. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> no suit for you. Out. Out. <laughs> I think I cut you off at 17 minutes. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about 17 minutes. <laughs> All right. Who's counting? Not me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this will be a general hearing for a Community Developmental recess. Grant. Pardon? We get our first. Recess. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to recess the Board of Commissioners and go into special hearing. Anything else that we need to do from that? This hearing will be for the Community Developmental Block Grants, the CDBG, a public hearing. And the purpose of this hearing is here today is to provide citizens and patrons information of, about the Community Developmental Program including an explanation of eligibility activities and program requirements. If there's anyone here that is will speak or want to speak, including the public, uh, if you could raise your hand. I'm going to have, you're going to be speaking. Oh, yep, both. Well, right, right hand. Yep. I do solemnly swear to affirm under the penalties of law and perjury of the state of Ohio that the testimony you're about to give, shall give, is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. I do. Okay, thank you. All right, Lisa, you are up. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first public hearing that is required prior to submitting any application with the state of Ohio through the community development program. Um, this first p 
public hearing is basically discussing what grants are available to the county and which ones we will be applying for this year. The first application is the Community Housing Impact Preservation Program, otherwise known as the CHIP program. This is the grant that the Neighborhood Development Service Services administers on behalf of the county. Um, they are eligible to apply this year, um, along with the City of Streetsboro and City of Ravenna. Um, applications will be due for due June 21st. The uh, activities um, that are permitted with this grant application is owner and rental reha rehabilitation, rehabilitation, owner and rental home repair, and down payment assistance and rehab. The next one is um, the one that um, we administer, which is the Community um, and Economic Development Program. The first application under that program is the Community Development Allocation Grant. We will not be eligible to apply this year since we applied last year. Mm -hmm. um, the commissioners will be eligible again in 2024. Um, just a couple of changes, just a note. Um, Streetsboro will once again be able to receive $150,000 um, strictly for projects within the city of Streetsboro. However, they will only be permitted to have two projects. The county will only be able to receive three projects instead of five projects. Five? Yeah, we, we used to Because they're have in five. the county? Is, so, it, is that what they're doing? Cities and the county, they're combining? No. 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 No, well, and you could look at it that way, but yeah. That Studio, they're allowed two and we're allowed three. Three, that would be five. And five. five. So they used to yeah. allow six, and okay. then they reduced to five. Five, and, and now we're down to three. Now we're down to three. I think the idea is because costs are going up, you know, a bunch of $30,000 yeah. or $40,000 grants don't carry you very far mm -hmm. now. So I think by consolidating the funds into three bigger projects, gotcha. it would have more impact. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure what our allocation is going to be. Um, I won't know that until or sometime early next year. Um, probably looking at March. Um, is Kent getting any money? They get history? their money through HUD. I okay. do not know, and it's administered by the. I see with the city with a population of at least fifteen thousand, and then yeah. between five and 15, fourteen. Yeah. And I don't know if Kent, because I know sometimes Kent gets. They do their own thing. Yeah, they in Ravenna. They're kind of separate. We were trying yeah. to work with Streets Brown, like for employees here and people that live in Ravenna, a bus route that would take them up to Streets Brown, and the route would go through Kent. And mm -hmm. because of that, we weren't allowed to do that because it was partially going through Kent and picking up people in Kent. Yeah, they're a separate entitlement area. So, so we yeah. couldn't do that. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's kind of silly. More um, than kind of silly. So that's the biggest change is the number of projects that we're going to be allowed. Um, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> um, the Neighborhood Revitalization Grant um, is another application we can apply for. Um, they will, OCD, Office of Community Development, will accept pre-application starting in May. Um, the maximum grant award uh, amount would be 750000 Eligible activities could include like public facility improvements such as constructing, reconstruction, and or rehabilitating infrastructure in targeted areas of distress. Then we have the Critical Infrastructure Grant, um, which currently we have two applications we're um, working through, one being Pratt Street and the other one's in the Village of Wyndham. Um, the, um, however, we can still um, submit additional Critical Infrastructure Grants if we have a project available. Um, Applications would be due um, starting in May. Those accept pre-applications, and the first round of applications will be due in June. Critical infrastructure grants was created basically to assist communities with funding for high-priority, single-purpose projects such as roads, flood, and drainage, and other public facility projects with high community-wide impact benefit, primarily res small residential areas. And one thing to note, um, even though it does allow um, streets to be um, under the application, 
they do not allow chip and seal. They do not allow um, street resurfacing or overlay of asphalt on an existing surface. That's not el eligible. The only way we can do streets is if you basically mill the entire road. Basically tear it off and put it in there. <laughs> so that's the only way we can get that covered. Um, well, has done that before though, haven't they? Because they received money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because anytime we're like, for instance, Pratt Street, they, I mean, they're milling, they had to mill the road in this order to be able to get a portion of the cost to resurface the road uh, covered under the grant. Um, they just, I don't know what it is about roads, they just, they're like, nope. <laughs> so, um, what else we got going here? Residential public, the residential public infrastructure program is, uh, we have two applications we will be applying for, but they will be using 2022 funds and, because um, they still have 2022 funds available. And um, two applications, uh, uh, actually no, I'm sorry. We have two projects we're going to be applying for, but it's not until July. We're using 2023 funds for this one, sorry. Um, one being the Chin Sewer construction, um, the, um, which is basically the uh, Babcock and Mott's allotment, um, Samar, Cloverlawn, High Knoll, and Chin First, Second, and Third allotment in Ravenna. We're going to be um, constructing um, we're looking for <coughs> funds to construct a public wastewater collection system, basically putting in new sewer, um, gravity sewers, pump station, and upgrades to the existing pump station and force main. That is one application. The second application that we're looking into putting in is the improvements uh, for the Manaway Village sewer mm -hmm. system. Um, they have a number of uh, crack pipes. Um, and they have some manholes that they may need to have uh, fixed and they want to put a camera down there to see, look for cracks or any issues. Um, so we're looking at putting in an application um, for that as well. The, um, those applications, we can't start putting those in um, until July, but we did receive a permission to put in the application because we already submitted the pre app last year. But we had to wait for like the chin allotment, we had to wait for the permit to install before we could actually submit the full application. Um, Manaway Village um, is the other project that we, you know, like I said, would like to submit for. Um, the uh, Target of Opportunity Grant Program is, the name is going to change and it's going to be starting for the 2023 applications and it's going to be now called the CWG Flexible Grant Program. But under the Target of Opportunity or Flexible Grant Program, um, they allow economic and community development, but we have the Economic and Community Development Flexible Grant Program. There is the Downtown Revitalization Target of Opportunity Program. This one um, we will be applying for using 2022 funds because there's funds available and that'll be the next <coughs> public hearing at 1015. So we can go into that a little more detail then. Um, New Horizons is the other final. Um, can we back up just a minute? Um, on that, on that uh, uh, new flexible grant program, the, the old target of opportunities, if you look at some of the, some of the things that the, the, some of the things are going to uh, promote, mm -hmm. it includes economic development to retain jobs. It has mm -hmm. community development projects to fund other eligible neighborhood and critical infrastructure projects, right. public rehab projects, housing projects benefiting right. severely disabled folks or people, you know, people. And then we have youth and homelessness. We have planning the, you know, to you know, plan for these kind of things and public services related to child care services. Um, victims of domestic violence, down payment assistance, drug abuse counseling, and treatments and education, emergency mm -hmm. assistance stuff. So there's a lot, that's a really it's pretty broad, good wide, yeah. Uh, so uh, I think this is something we need to send out to our communities and, and remind them too that they could apply for these kind of funds. So I was going to wait to the end for that, but the question is, is how does everybody in the community of all of Portage County know that, hey, if I'm looking for money to 
projects. This is great. Uh, well, so how do I? How do I? So Tony gets his bright idea in Aurora, yeah. and I've never been to the county seat. Yeah. How do I? How do I know that? How do I? Well, when I start looking. I, well, so you know, because of the comprehensive plan, we made a nice, wonderful, mm -hmm. <laughs> mass email list of all the elected yep. officials in Portage County, or at least the. Uh, presidents and chairpersons from every community. Mm -hmm. So we can send out, we can use that mailing awesome. list and send this out to them. Because this is definitely different than how targeted opportunities were written before. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, obviously it's going to have to benefit 51% LMI if they, if you yeah, get like, that's, the key. Yeah. that's the thing. So I'm looking for a grant. I can go to any one of my city or township as people, ask there, and then they can, they can show me, hey, this is what you have to have, even a requirement, but they point me in that direction. Okay, yeah. yeah, and a lot of the, you know, you know, like this says public rehab, so if there's a, a building that's owned by a city, even I think they can call it blight and, and you know, use that money towards fixing their blight, but then there's domestic violence. It doesn't just happen in the townships or, or, or then it happens all over. So right. Domestic violence, right. drug rehab is mentioned in there, and other things that could yeah. mention, and those people are all, you know, I should, I should watch how I say things, but most of those people that have those issues are LMI, you mm -hmm. know. So it could help a lot of people, even if you are in a city like Aurora or, or Streetsboro even. You know, they, they could probably use this money. Yeah. All right. Great. Good. And the only final um, grant that's available would be the New Horizons Fair Housing Assistance Program. Um, this is basically for anything over and above the current fair housing program that we operate under the CWG allocation grant. So this is over and above that. So it's, it could be for anything that furthers fair housing. Um, we can apply for additional funds up to $15,000 or 5,000 for each additional jurisdiction that we um, put into the application. Excellent. Thank you, Lisa. Todd, anything to add? Is there um, good? We, uh, the only other thing I could add is I'll point that out about the targets mm -hmm. or the flexible funding, and I can send that out today. Okay, uh, yeah. Make sure everybody has a chance to see it. You know, point out specific things that might help their communities. Yeah, that, that'd be great because I mean that is pretty unusual the way they just describe that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I like it. Yeah. I mean, we've done business startups before. Um, it's just that the people that you employ, at least for the one I'm thinking of. Um, was 51 percent of the people had to be considered LMI. So the people that will be employed there. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, great. I have a question real quick. The new new horizon for housing assistance mm -hmm. program. What exactly it says in your eligible activities implementing strategies to address impediments to fair housing choice activities that uh, affirmatively further for housing. What exactly, what would be an example of that? Well, one of the things that they really liked when the last time we did the New Horizons grant, which was a couple years ago, they really liked us going to see the seniors, graduating seniors at the local high schools, mm -hmm. and just basically explaining to them what their rights are about oh. renting and stuff, because they, they don't know, they get taken advantage of, and or what to look out for so they know they're being unfairly treated. Mm -hmm. And the, the state actually promoted that, and so they wanted more communities to, to meet with graduating seniors and talk to them, because they thought that was a good idea. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any public comment on anything that we've just heard? Hearing none, we will make a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Okay. Roll call. Uh, Tony? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Nice job. Okay. Do we need to adjourn again? Uh, recess, yes. Do we need to recess board of commissioners and move to, to a public hearing? Well, we didn't reconvene as the board of commissioners. Though, yeah, did we, we didn't. No, no, we just roll right into roll. it because yeah, we don't recess. Yeah. We don't recess. Okay. Okay. The <coughs> purpose for this hearing is the CD, CDBG target of opportunity downtown building program public hearing. I'm Commissioner Tony Battalamenti. The purpose of this hearing is, today is to seek citizen input and discussion of the 2022 CDBG target of opportunity downtown building program. Anyone that wishes to speak on this, I will swear you in at this time. So anybody that's going to speak, please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear to affirm under the penalty of law or perjury of the state of Ohio the testimony that you're about to give it shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the tr truth. Please say I do. I, I do. do. Okay. Lisa. Okay. So 
We are submitting an application for a building um, in the village of Manaway. Um, the village of Manaway, um, the building surrounding the lots of the historic Main Street Commercial District located at the northeast corner of Main and Prospect Street, um, they've suffered from effects of deterioration, dilapidation, and age. Um, so the village has declared an area in the village, it's in the downtown area, um, as Slum and Blight. One particular building located at 10676, 10678, 10682 East Main Street is the area or the building that we are looking to submit a grant application for. Um, and what we were proposing to do is use funds to provide access and protection for existing stores during construction replace residential doors with eight-foot commercial entry doors, replace existing um, glazing with insulated low E glazing and direct set wood frames with aluminum wrapped exterior skins, repair, rebuild the storefronts and columns. Um, we are going to rebuild and repair the cornices and the overhangs and we're going to clean and repair the brickwork and joints on the west south east side of the building so currently the building looks like this mm -hmm. so um, this is the building and what we are hoping to accomplish nice. <laughs> is the end up like this and just to note these sidewalks and the handrails that is going to be done under the uh, 2022 CDBG allocation grant, mm -hmm. which was funded last year. So we will be working on that um, as well this year. Um, so and th they're changing the handicap accessibility through that area or make it? A yeah, yeah, we're going to make it a handicap right, right. accessible. Okay. That's how we got it yep. funded. So, um, awesome. so in the end, everything's going to look like that. Um, and then uh, we are proposing to, the estimate for the project is $225,000. We are going to ask for 200,800 200, in CBG funds, or downtown building funds, um, plus 15,000 in administration, and 24,200 will be contributed by the Downtown Manway Revitalization Corporation. Um, towards the uh, construction of the project. Um, the grant application is due tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, if there's any questions, None. we can answer. We do have representatives Kay. from the uh, DMRC. We, we will do a public hearing. You're allowed to speak. Anybody would like to speak? Okay. My Kay. name is Tom Cabalkin. Uh, we have to oh, did, did, Tom, did you, when I said you anybody going to speak, did you raise your hand? Thank you. Uh, I'm Vice President of Downtown Manorwood Revitalization Corporation. And I just wanted to mention we've already uh, supported this project with $10,000 in engineering fees. And we do intend to uh, support it with other monies that we've collected. And uh, in order to support the overall program, we have started a capital campaign trying to raise uh, a significant amount of money. And if you don't mind, I'd like to give you our brochure that we put together. Please do. Sure. You bring it up. Delta Manaways, I drive through just about every day. It's looking great. Yeah, it is. You guys have done so much there, it's unbelievable. That's a really so the, the building that you're revitalizing, there's work on the backside or the parking lots that are on the backside of that. Is there any thought process about, about that going on? Or is it, this whole thing yeah. include yeah. that? Is it okay if I speak? Or please, or? Yeah, state your name, yes. please. I'm, I'm Dan Tillett. I did sign in. Um, I'm one of the owners of the coffee shop and the butcher shop. The butcher shop is in the block that we're working on. Mm -hmm. When I started working with DMRC to 
get the improvements for accessibility and improving the storefronts, we did not own anything on that side. It just happened as things progressed. And so when we did part of that work, we started working with that overall plan. Mm -hmm. But parking downtown is very, Limited. very much needed. And so we started working on, uh, actually back in 2012, a preliminary concept of this was done by Manfrus and uh, Eric Hummel was working on it. And now we are working towards getting that done. Um, it would have completely changed the accessibility to the rear of the buildings. It would provide a much more attractive area on the east prospect for all the businesses there, plus pr provide more parking for those people. Safer parking, yeah, it's, it's a dangerous area right now. So is there the plan to expand that or some of those parking lots that are gravel? Yeah, so it's going to utilize the same space, or actually expand the space as well. So it would take place, it could be extend to the north a little bit more. And then the the way the parking is now with the gravel and, and unused areas because of fall off on mm -hmm. the uh, slopes, the uh, the overall net pickup I think would be 20, 30 spots and uh, that and the improvement to the just appearance and accessibility because uh, it, Eric's concept of this is to actually get ground level access to the ground floors or which are now basements mm -hmm. uh, so that there could be more commercial retail space so because I like that little that art festival that you have is that spruce right yeah right. right so so my question is is because that's where everything is how do I get how do I park all these parking spaces that you're thinking about adding that if if the art on the hill is there how do I get there well I've heard the DMRC is flexible <laughs> <laughs> and we can certainly accommodate that the the Entrance is, as you're referring to, the entrance is off of Prospect Street. Right. And then uh, you come in from the backside, so that, that all that parking access that I think you're talking about isn't there. Yeah, so we, we would have to make an accommodation, mm -hmm. a single lane for that. that uh, that's only a, about 70, 80 feet that you would have to have Just the a, front part of the street. a traffic lane, mm -hmm. you know, for art on the hill. But that, I believe that could be accommodated. and. With better minds than mine, we yeah. can figure something else out. Too. Yeah, that, that, that is a really pretty cool event that, mm -hmm. uh, that you had there. Spent a lot of money there last year. Uh, that, uh, <laughs> is there anything Thank else? Thank you. Thank come you. Back. <laughs> I will. I will. Did you see those baskets that they fold down and they come out? You just oh, pull yeah. it? They, yeah. They were incredible. Have you seen those? He, it's yeah. a carving, it's a piece of wood, and then he, different baskets, and you just grab the handle and it comes up and it's a 3D basket that you put stuff in and when you're done with it, you just collapse yeah. it. Which, yes, very, very cool. Anyway, my commercial for that for you. Is there anything else to come before the board or anybody else have public hearing? Hearing uh, none, Lisa, last yes, sir? Thing, uh, on that parking lot, uh, we consider the sidewalk improvements phase one, mm -hmm. the facade improvements mm -hmm. phase two, and the parking lot will be phase three. Okay. And that's undergoing some engineering and architect work right now and it will be submitted in the future. Okay, excellent. Near future. Okay, great, thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, Lisa, do you have anything else? Oh, no. Okay. okay. Hearing? a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. You read the resolution. We'll go ahead and reconvene okay, as the Board of Commissioners, and I'll make a motion to authorizing uh, authorization to Original Planning Commission to submit an application with the Ohio Development Service Agency Office of Community Development for the 2022 CDBG Target of Opportunity Downtown Buildings Program Fund. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony. Yes. Thank you all for coming in. Looks Thank you. Looking good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to Jake's for lunch. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Have it ready at 12 15, please. <laughs> We're doing commercials. I'm going to throw that up. I just want to be clear on how much. Okay, if you could all step out, out of the room if you want to. Yeah.
that? For, for the downtown and Wayne. Oh, for the downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Here we got Randy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've got something into John Davis. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I just want morning, to Randy. Morning, Joe. Morning. Come on in. Come on in. Yeah. 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 Lisa, if you could exit stage oh, right. <laughs> Morning. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. I told Diane I saw you. Oh, okay. Come on up, guys. Good morning. Good morning. You're right here. Right here. Okay. Good morning. The new digs here. Yeah. This is very impressive. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Guys are on. Okay, we're on the record. Yes, sir. You're on the record. All right, so our our purpose this morning is, and I sent you a memo kind of outlining things. We've had multiple discussions with the cities here in the city, in the county about potentially working together on us doing work for them, taking over their building departments, mutual aid. It's, it's run a gamut. Yeah. And each time it's sort of fallen on deaf ears. We haven't gotten a lot of success in the process. Uh, at one time, I was approached by the service director uh, of Ravenna a number of years back, way before my retirement. We went to council there, and it fell on it died a slow death that night, even though they requested us to look into this. So um, uh, back in October, I was approached, or by November, I was approached by both uh, Kent and Ravenna because they're working on very thin ice with the people they have on either in employment or they use part-time, after hours, whatever for building departments. And we're very fortunate here in the county, our building department, unlike the rest in the county, has a full staff of people that meet all the requirements of the code <coughs> to have all the certified employees on staff. And that includes Joe, includes myself, includes Bill Ross, our master plans examiner, and includes our two inspectors. And we're, uh, the, we're the anomaly having everybody on staff mm -hmm. to do the full job and do it completely by law. So we do have that luxury. So we've talked with Ravenna. They are in need soon of having to have someone do inspections for them. They use people after hours, so people go yeah. at night, uh, weekends, because they're working someplace else, they're on part time, they're under contract, it, it varies. So what we did is I chatted with them specifically and wanted to bring this to your attention, get your opinion on this, and if you would like us to move forward with the discussion thread, at some point we would this would become a legal agreement between the communities. We'd let our law directors handle all that, where we would do their inspections uh, for building mechanical and electrical on a daily basis uh, as the work comes in, transmitted to us, we do the inspections, transmit the results back to them, and then we would invoice them at a per inspection fee. I threw in a dollar amount of $30 per inspection because that's what they're paying now to all of their people. I've run some numbers on our side. Michelle and I chatted, or Michelle, she's over there, and I chatted about this yesterday. Uh, I said, I was curious how we look at a, the, the salaries of our inspectors and the number of inspections they do. What is the breakdown? What kind of, what's it work out to, to the hourly cost of an inspection or the per inspection? Actually, it's within 50 cents of $30 an hour, uh, or $30 per inspection on the average. So our numbers are comparable to what we're doing. We drive through the city every day to get where we're going. It's not out of our way. The number of inspections they have are minimal. And if our inspectors are busy, Joe and I can back that up uh, and keep it going and bring in a little extra revenue and be an outreach to help another community, assuming if we go to their council, they approve it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to get your opinion on that and get your concurrence to move forward with further discussions. So the personnel that we have mm -hmm. in the county, it's not gonna overtax them or be out of the way. No. Nope. It's doing service for the two or three communities that you're speaking of. Well, it would be just Ravenna. It would be just Ravenna right just now? Ravenna you said right Kent now. as well. Well, so Kent was talking to okay. us. I wanted to say okay. we're just only for Ravenna. Ravenna. Kent, maybe later we could help them in other ways, mm -hmm. such as building official plans examination, but mm -hmm. to do their inspections, it's way out of the way. If, if we got to that level, then we'd have to look to try to hire someone okay. for that. But we're not at that threat We're just yet. talking this about City of Ravenna. Ravenna. Right. Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah, the only problem I would have with that is, is that you get overtaxed. Mm -hmm. um, you guys know the wave form as it comes through. And mm -hmm. You're busy one week, and mm -hmm. then next week nobody wants you, and then the following week everybody wants you. 
and I just don't want our residents calling and saying, you know, it's taking forever to get the building department out to do this. Or uh, the second side of that uh, is that you guys are just too busy. And that would be my only concern. My, I can speak to that, though, a little bit. I mean, I've worked with Randy and, and now Joe for a while. I, I think they do a very good job of prioritizing their work before taking on additional work. And again, this is only if you have someone available. Mm -hmm. So um, I know once upon a time we had talked about doing like like almost like a mutual aid thing mm -hmm. with with numerous different communities because we cover the county wide and if we've got someone in Aurora or let's say just say Streets of Aurora or somewhere that doesn't have an inspector doing an inspection but you need someone in Deerfield and some community closer to Deerfield can do it we could outsource or do like mutual um, exchange mm -hmm. or billing for for those services mm -hmm. and I, I remember when you were trying to get all that put together mm -hmm. before and like you said it sort of like dies on the vine, vine because no one wants to give up their their kingdoms it's true but yet there's fewer and fewer people in your field and it's becoming problematic mm -hmm. so yeah we're for, like I said we're fortunate we have the full complement within our crew but that's mm -hmm. an issue that's an item but uh, uh, Commissioner Tindland, to answer you, we, I wouldn't suggest this if we didn't have the ability to do the job. Code allows us four days to do an inspection forever and a day since I ran the department up to my retirement and then post-retirement back. We're never more than a day out on inspections uh, to get them done with our team. And we have, the ex we have the time just with our existing team to do the limited number of inspections that Ravenna has. Ravenna doesn't have many. They'll have a deck, they'll have a furnace going. That's very minor. And even our current electrical inspector does their electrical inspections after hours, and he may do those a day or two a week, and there's only very minimal. So the numbers that I have in the document reference their previous year's inspections, which compared to ours, we had 5,000 inspections last year, and they only had a couple hundred. So it's a, it's a minimal amount, but I certainly hear your concern, and I, and well, I, I mimic that yeah. as well. I, uh, all I can talk to you is uh, a year ago when I was knocking on doors, mm -hmm. Um, trying to promote my smiley face, um, I had uh, it did go well. I had people that complained that said it was there were three four weeks. I had a gentleman on Mumford Road um, in Nelson Township that was highly upset because uh, he poured uh, and was waiting for inspections and he would call and all he was given was uh, he was too busy. And no. get out there as soon as possible. I, 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 I hear that, and I'm sure the person told you that in good faith. Well, I'll give you his name and number. Uh, yeah, because yeah. that I wish was, we would have uh, known it at the time because yeah. I'd have been glad yeah. to look into it. So, I, yeah, I have a concern with that um, that, that you are available and uh, you can't handle the, the calls that come in. And, and as you know, Commissioner Bennett said, she knows you and everything's fine. And I have. We're not talking integrity here. I, I'm, yeah. talking, yeah. I, I'm talking being able to, to take care of people and making a statement to them and telling them what we're going to take care of you. And I'm there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm with you. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's what um, we do believe in the yeah. same thing. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So my last question is, as soon as I'll eventually you'll be over there, you good with this? I am. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I have full, full confidence in our staff and, uh, and us as a certified building department. Uh, to handle that workload, uh, understanding that there are ebbs and flows and tides yeah. that come with tied to the economy and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, I have the utmost confidence in our staff and our inspectors to be able to go ahead and manage that. They have uh, the responsibility of their own schedule mm -hmm. once that is put into their uh, into their um, inspection list. Um, I've got utmost confidence in, in awesome. our team. And they too Actually, have been part a of this discussion. Yeah. Oh yeah. This so the whole just, department's kind yeah, of this doesn't I'm, isn't yeah. me saying yeah. I want to do this and we'll, yeah. we'll let no, them know later. It's this a win is, win. Been when you need to know. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> integral. <laughs> integral. So is there I I I'm good with that. Oh, absolutely. Tell you. All through it, you got the blessings. Okay, so we'll move forward and we'll keep you informed Thank as, you. as this develops and then when we get to the level We'll be working with Chris and company to get legal documents put together on how we do this. Okay, great. Right. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming in today. I'd like to make an official oh. comment. Oh.
Okay. <laughs> no, Please no. do. Um, Joe has completed all of his required certifications. Joe. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Give Joe the time. Thank Congratulations, you sir. Thank Good you job. for the commissioner's uh, yeah. and administration's support. Yeah, that's Thank awesome. Yeah. Effective May 1st, Joe Monday. will become the uh, director of building official. May 1st? Um, that's Monday. That's a popular day. Monday, yeah. I had that in my. Uh, just, it just dawned on me. 5,000 resolutions. Oh, I are said it. Yeah, my birthday coming up. Yeah. yeah Turn around. May Day. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good job, gentlemen. Yeah. And you'll be staying on. Oh, yeah. I'm staying on. I'm just going to okay. step back yeah. and still okay. support because we, we are busy. Yeah. Great. That's we awesome. Are busy. It's good to hear. Congratulations. Right. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Right. I think we're going to be next with you anyway. So just your back. Chris, you're up, sir. Yeah. We're, at, we're actually almost on perfect timing. I don't know. Commissioner, I think we have an executive session. Yes, we do. Okay. Come on up. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to, to, get to go into executive session in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 121.22G3, motion to enter into executive session to for conferences with an attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body that are subject of eminent court action. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. <laughs> Is, uh, was, was the gentlemen are sta we're, we're staying? Uh, Joe?
So there's no public comment? No public comment. Um, there was one, but he But he talked to man away. He gave me one, but it was for man away. Yeah. Oh. Right. Right. Well, Chris, do we have to go out and then come back in? I don't see a need for that. There's nobody out there. No, no, no we no, don't no have public comment. I'm just going to check in. No public comment. So, we'll so we continue as, yeah. as is? Okay, we're going to stay in the executive session.
And make motion to come out of executive session. Second. Roll. Oh, roll call. Roll <laughs> call. Tony. I'm sorry. Yes. Mike. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. All right. Action. Uh, no action. Open up the game. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. A, lot, a lot of stuff for nothing. Great to see everybody. And you know what, Sarah? In the future, we need to have that door open for when we come out. Just, just so you know. And yeah, we'll be back once we're done. Okay. Do you need something else, Chris? Were you going to have that executive session? Yes. Yeah. Well. Oh, okay. All right. So we haven't got that. Okay. We're going to county administrator. Oh. County administrator. Okay. Well, I would like to announce the official retirement of our current county engineer, Mr. Marazzi, uh, and congratulate him. Congratulations. Thank you, sir, for, Thank you, sir, for all the service you've done it's for about time. Yeah, I miss you. a long time. Where are you going? Pardon? Florida. Where are you going? Nowhere. No. I'm, no. I'm, did you come out of my lawn? I am going to winter in Florida. No uh, I've got that set up, and nice. we're looking forward to that. And we're going to do some traveling, uh, not a lot, uh, and uh, we're going to enjoy our grandchildren more. Good for you. Excellent. Good for you. To the best of you and your, your wife. Is your wife retired too now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. I'm joining her. So. There you go. <laughs> Great. Excellent. <coughs> okay. In addition to that, I would like to recommend um, Larry Jenkins <coughs> because the board does have the right to fill the vacancy until the central committee can appoint officially appoint yeah. a replacement for our, our current county engineer. So effective on May twelfth. Yes, yep. I would like to recommend Larry Jenkins uh, as also supported by our current um, county engineer. Yeah, we received a letter on both the resignation and the recommendation, and I'm in full agreement. So am I. Yep. Yep. All right, so, so I'll go ahead and make a motion for these resolutions. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners accepts the resignation of Portage County Engineer Michael A. Marazzi, PEPS, effectively May 12, 2023, who has served Portage County for 34 years as the county engineer. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Wow. Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioner authorizes the appointment of Larry D. Jenkins, Jr., P.E., P.S., C.P., S.W.Q., to serve <laughs> as Acting Portage County Engineer, effective May 12, 2023, until such time as the County Central Committee of the political party that nominated the last occupant of that office proceeds with its appointment in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 305.02. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Congratulations, Congratulations Mr. Jenkins. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Mickey, enjoy. And we have free time. It's just a few doors down. <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't going to run for mayor of our show. <laughs> <laughs> but you can because we need one. <laughs> I know. I've never seen Mickey smile so much. <laughs> there's, a, there's been a lot of that going on. A lot of giddy this. Yeah, I know. He's super excited. Are we going to have Guido's at your retirement bash? Oh, yeah. okay. I, just want, I guess I'm just checking. How late does that go? We're going to ask. Probably, we're, we posted 12.30 to 2.30. Could be like we'll 7, 7.30. We'll, we'll probably I should keep back. going as long as the food and the, the drinks are there. And that will probably be until the people decide. Yeah. Time to go. Good for you. Great, great. So, good luck. Okay. okay. Now thank we're going to go. You guys, we're going to go into executive Biggest session. Good session. Good. Okay. Thank Appreciate you, gentlemen. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Okay, I'll make a motion in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 121.22G2. The Board of Commissioners moves into executive session to consider the purchase of property for public purposes. If premature disclosure of information would give an unfair competitive or bargaining advantage, to a person whose personal private interest is adverse to the general public interest. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Sure. Yes.
entire. Okay, well, there you go. Right. Uh, no, I just did that. Motion. Here, I just took motion to come out of executive location. I'll make a motion to come out of executive session. Second. Roll call, please. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. Chris, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no way. Thanks, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. thank you. Appreciate it. And so, just let me know. Do you have my cell phone number? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. I yep. got I, yes. I, I don't have Mike's yet, but I'll get. I'll get you it. You don't want his. <laughs> it's at Mike's place on the restroom wall. <laughs> 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 Let's move on to miscellaneous. That's please. right where I put it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Miscellaneous. Oh, no, you're not. Group here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> let me clear my throat here. <clears> throat> The, I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the April 17, 2023 Certificate of the County Auditor that the total annual appropriations for each fund do not exceed the amended official estimate of resources for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023, as presented by the Portage County Auditor's Office. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the April 21st, 2023 Certificate of the County Auditor that the total annual appropriations from each fund do not exceed the amended official estimate of resources for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2023, as presented by the Portage County Auditor's Office. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. <coughs> Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the April 20th 2023 correspondence from the Portage County Engineer's Office regarding the increase of dry culvert replacement costs to $800 for property owners effective May 1st, 2023. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the Portage County Revolving Loan Funds balance sheet dated March 31st as presented by NDS or Neighborhood Development Services. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners acknowledges um, receipt of the Portage County Investment Reconciliation for the month of March 2023 as presented by the County Treasurer and County Auditor. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Roll, yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners authorized payment from the General Fund 0001 Memorial Day Expense. ORG 09030004, object number 426100 by the Veterans Service Commission to each entity applying for assistance to aid in defraying the expense as of Memorial Day activities as stipulated in ORC section 307.66 as follows. American Legion Post 193 Manaway $500. American Legion Auxiliary 193 Manaway $100. American Legion Post 331 Ravenna $500. American Legion Auxiliary 331 Ravenna $100. American Legion Sons 331 Ravenna $100. American Legion Post 496 Kent $500. American Legion Post 674 Wyndham $500. American Legion Auxiliary 685 Streetsboro $100. American Legion Post 713 Deerfield $500. American Legion Post 803, Aurora $500. American Legion Auxiliary 803, Aurora $100. Um, Catholic uh, War Veterans 1954, uh, Britstown $500. Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 1055, Ravenna $500. Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary 1055, Ravenna $100. Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2629, Aurora $500. Veterans of Foreign Wars post 8487, Magador $500. Next. Um, Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary 8487, Magador $100. Veterans of Foreign Wars post 9716, Streetsboro $500. Veterans of Foreign Wars Auxiliary 9716, Streetsboro $100 for a total of $6,300. Second. Roll call, please. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. No, I was not reading that again. <laughs> I almost asked. Uh, I know. I, I was waiting. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners authorizes the appointment of Jennifer Hafner to the Ohio Children's Trust Fund Regional Prevention Council. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners approves a resolution declaring the need to levy a renewal tax in excess of 10 mil limitation for the requirements of the Portage County Board of Developmental Disabilities pursuant to ORC 5705.222. Second. Roll call. Serena? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tony? Yes. So anything else to come before the board today? Motion Nothing? to adjourn. Second. Uh, 
Tony. Roll call. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mike. Roll yes. Sabrina. Yes. Okay. Good job. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Yep. Absolutely.